This is AIM Agenda. Thanks for your company with me this morning, Ed Husey and Senator Simon Birmingham. We're now going to take a look at this uh, issue around Tony Abbott paying back accrued travel expenses, which he, uh, which were accrued when he was promoting his book Battle Lines back in 2009. It sparked a bit of an exchange with a, a journalist at a news conference in Sydney yesterday. Let's let's take a look if you haven't seen it. The matter was fully dealt with last year. As I said, it was uh, an oversight in my office. It was fully dealt with last year. Fully dealt with last year. I think I've fully dealt with it. Time to move on. This was dealt with two years ago. This is old news. Uh, old news. Now, um, why is Kevin Rudd now trying to dish this sort of dirt? Nothing that was uh, deliberately done wrong uh, and the matter was closed. Calm down. Ed Husick, and, and it was closed by the Minister, Special Minister of State at the time, Gary Gray. Tony Abbott was right to, to say that. Yeah, he's, he's uh, dealt with it, uh, you know, and it's a, a matter for him uh, to deal with and move on. I just didn't understand why he needed to uh, introduce the Prime Minister into it. I'm uh, reminded of that saying, when you're sitting on a limb, don't soar. I, I just figure, you know, he's got to deal with it himself, but there's no need to introduce others or deflect uh, the way that he did to the journalist uh, that was uh, present at that uh, press conference and asking the questions. He's saying Labor's digging the dirt. That was the, that was the assertion, wasn't it? Well, I mean, again, he's got to... Uh, that, that's a matter for Mr Abbott to deal with. I mean, I, I just, uh, you know, from my perspective, and it's why I make the point, um, you know, he can deal with it and move on. We're not interested in blues and, and negativity. Let's just get on with things. And, and, you know, he can answer the questions along the way, but there's no need to deflect to... Uh, either the PM or the journalists involved. If he's got nothing to, if he's got no problems, he's got no issues, then just deal with it. Senator Birmingham, to, to you on that, was, was the way Mr Abbott handled it the, the, the best approach? Well, Kieran, it's a remarkable coincidence that uh, a matter that was dealt with, done and dusted two years ago, that is a minor administrative error, uh, suddenly comes back in the days after Kevin Rudd's return as Prime Minister uh, and seems to be being pushed around in certain quarters. So uh, I think uh, there is uh, a strange coincidence at best at play here uh, and if Kevin Rudd and the Labor Party are going to preach positive politics then I would hate to see these types of uh, things turned into smears because in the end uh, these types of mistakes happen all the time. Uh, Tony Burke recently repaid $7,000 uh, from an administrative error in Tony, in Tony Abbott's case, his publisher repaid the money because it was an administrative error between his office and the publisher. Now, these are matters uh, from a couple of years ago, and it's just disturbing that as we get close to an election campaign, we start to see these types of smears being pushed around by somebody, uh, and it's obviously not somebody in the Liberal camp, uh, so I just question where that would be coming from. On to the issue of asylum seekers. Seven asylum seekers, according to the uh, Australian report this morning, uh, jumped overboard from their vessel. They received assistance from an Australian patrol boat. This was a couple of weeks ago, Ed Cusick. They jumped uh, uh, reportedly, um, according to this report in the Australian, because they feared that they were going to be sent back to Indonesia. This is, this is a really problematic trend, isn't it, where you've got uh, asylum seekers either threatening or um, undertaking self-harm to put pressure on those that are, are rendering them assistance. How can the government respond? Is there anything you can do other, you know, short of sending in the military, as Scott Morrison indicated, you should consider earlier in the week? We've been discussing this over the last few years, Kieran, and uh, reflecting on the point that, yeah, every time uh, a government response uh, on this issue uh, is uh, undertaken, you know, people smugglers change the rules and you need to be able to uh, be fast enough to move uh, with the changing circumstances. It's not good enough uh, to just, you know, throw back to uh, old solutions. You need to think uh, of new ways of dealing with the issue. And importantly too, there's no point us standing on the Australian shoreline with a megaphone yelling at the Indonesians and uh, making demands on them uh, to do what we want. We need to find a way within the region uh, and within interested parties as well and interested countries as well uh, of tackling this. So I think the announcement last week by uh, the, the PM and uh, Indonesia in terms of uh, holding the, uh, you know, a regional conference on this in involving all the nations that uh, have an interest in this matter, I think is an important step forward and reflects the fact we can't just uh, we just can't push an, a solution uh, on one country. We've got to work together on it. The point that Ed Husey and Tony Burke made yesterday, Simon Birmingham, is that 
you, you can't uh, photocopy a policy from more than a decade ago and expect it to work given the people smugglers have, have shifted their approach. Kieran, a key point that was just made then by Ed Husick is that when you change the policies, the people smugglers change the model. And that's absolutely true because what happened five and six years ago is Kevin Rudd axed temporary protection visas, Kevin Rudd eliminated the Pacific solution, Kevin Rudd backflipped on his previous commitment to turn back boats where it was safe to do so. On all of those things, the people smugglers reacted. And that's why we've had 45,000, 45, 46,000 additional arrivals since that time, because the policies that had worked were dismantled. And we've now seen a $10 billion plus blowout in the costs of managing this problem. So I fully accept that policies have consequences to how people smugglers try to get boats to Australia. We know that. That's why okay. we want to restore policies this, that have worked in the past. This, this is the point, uh, Kieran. And, uh, We've and got to so go, Ed. Yep. Within te 10 seconds, just quickly. Yeah, it's impossible. You know how much I talk. The 10-second <laughs> rule just won't work with me. <laughs> OK, mate. Well, we'll cut it off there. We'll, we'll reconvene another time, Ed Husick. Simon, Senator Simon Birmingham, thanks so much, Jen. Thanks, Kieran. And Ed. we're going to take a quick break yeah. on AIM Agenda. When we return, we're going to cross to live to Arnhem Land where uh, there are uh, commemorations and, um, and celebrations sent half a century on from the Yurikala Bark petitions, which were a very important milestone in the land rights movement. So stay with us here on AIM Agenda. We'll be right back.